detectives and welcome to my video for August. This month has, as you might have noticed, been quite busy for me because my newest book, Top Marks for Murder, is out now in the UK and Ireland and I have been travelling all over the UK, visiting as many cities as I can and meeting as many of you as possible to sign your copies of Top Marks for Murder, to talk about it, I was up at the Edinburgh Book Festival talking about it, and to meet you and answer your questions about me and my books. That tour is over now, it is done, but don't worry, this is not the end of my events for 2019. I have a lot more events to announce. In October and November this year I'm going to be traveling to lots of areas I haven't managed to get to this month and I'm also going to be traveling to three different countries in all, one of which I have never visited before as an author. So keep an eye on my website calendar, keep an eye on my social media for more details, but do not worry, I will be back in October and November with loads more Top Marks for Murder events if you didn't get to see me this month. As well as doing events, I've been doing loads of reading, and here is a roundup of my very favourite new books this month. The first book I've chosen this month is The Naughtiest Unicorn by Pip Bird, illustrated by David O'Connell. The Naughtiest Unicorn is about a girl called Mira. Mira cannot wait to go to unicorn school. Her big sister, Rani, already goes and she keeps sending Mira slightly smug messages about how wonderful unicorn school is, what great friends she's made, and what a wonderful unicorn she now owns. So Mira cannot wait to get to unicorn school. But when she finally arrives on her first day, she realizes that the unicorn she is destined to have is not exactly that dream perfect unicorn she has in her mind, because her unicorn is this unicorn here, this is Dave, and he is the naughtiest unicorn of the title. He is just bad at every opportunity, he does not seem to want to bond with Mira, and Mira feels really frustrated and really confused as all of her dreams kind of crumble to dust. But of course there is more to Dave than meets the eye, and Mira and Mira's human and unicorn friends end up having a really great time at unicorn school. I would say this book is for about five, six plus. It's perfect for anyone who maybe doesn't want to go back to school or doesn't want to go to school for the very first time, as well as perfect for anyone who loves unicorns, because this book is full of unicorns and rainbows and glitter and all of those wonderful things. It's really funny, it's really clever, it's very warm, and I really enjoyed it. It is the first in a new series, more are coming very soon, uh, but this is The Naughtiest Unicorn and it is out now for five plus. The next book I've chosen is one of my favourite debuts of this year and it is A Pocket Full of Stars by Aisha Bushby. This is the story of Sophia, a girl who loves computer games, loves her friends, but really struggles to get on with her mother. Her mother doesn't understand Sophia's interest in gaming, and they always seem to be arguing. Every time Sophia goes to visit her mother, they end up yelling at each other. But then a terrible tragedy occurs and Sophia's mother falls into a coma. Sophia rushes to be beside her bedside, but as she sits there, something very strange happens. Suddenly, she finds herself in a house, a house that she realizes is the house her mother grew up in, in Kuwait. And something funny is going on with this house. It's not just a place that she can walk around in, it seems to be set up like one of Sophia's favorite video games. Sophia realizes she has to solve all the puzzles and complete the game so she can find out what really happened to her mother when she was Sophia's age. This is a really cleverly set up book. It's beautifully written, it's beautifully imagined. I loved the video game world that Sophia falls into. It's a very different kind of fantasy story and I think a very unique and interesting one. It's very sad in places, it's funny, it's beautiful. This is a really great book from Aisha and I can't wait to see what she does next. I would say this is perfect for anyone 8 plus who loves adventure stories, who loves games, who loves stories about best friends and secrets and mysteries. The next book I've chosen is a YA novel and it is No Big Deal by Bethany Rutter, which I think has one of my very favourite covers of this summer. I just love this picture of Emily, the main character on the front cover. I think it is a genius look for this book. This is the story of Emily, who knows that she is beautiful and clever and interesting, 
but who is struggling to prove to the world that she is all of those things. Because as you can see from the cover, Emily is fat. This is really something that she does not care about at all, which is the first wonderful thing about this book, because there are more and more books with fat characters, even with fat main characters, but often uh, the books are all about how that fat character is really struggling with their appearance, they really don't like themselves, they're worrying or they're trying to diet. But this is one of the first books I've ever read where the main character is fat and is totally fine with that fact, thinks it's great, thinks it's totally normal, and doesn't lose weight, doesn't worry about losing weight. This book is not about, really, about Emily's size, it is just about her life. And that is really refreshing and lovely to see. The story starts when Emily and her friends are about to go back to school after the summer holidays. Emily is particularly excited to see her best friend Camilla, who has been gone all summer. But when Camilla is finally back, Emily is really shocked to see that Camilla, who used to be the only other fat girl in the class, this is a special bond they share, Camilla has lost weight. And so now Emily is the only fat girl in her class, which makes her feel a little bit vulnerable. At the same time, her mother, who is also fat and who has real body image issues, is once again about to start a new diet, something that Emily really feels uncomfortable with, that she wishes she wouldn't do, because Emily's mother, unlike Emily, doesn't see herself as beautiful and important and special. Emily's mother really does struggle with how she looks. So Emily is dealing with all of this, and at the same time, she is falling in love. She has met this boy who she thinks is absolutely gorgeous and fantastic. So this book is all about Emily falling in love, struggling with friendships, struggling with family relationships, but never losing sight of her own self-worth. I really enjoyed reading this book. It's funny, it's interesting, it's realistic, and I also really like the message it sends. The author, Bethany Rutter, is one of my very favorite people to follow on Twitter. She dispenses the most amazing advice about being yourself and ignoring diet culture. Now, this is something that I struggled with for a long time, and I think almost everyone who is alive today will, because there is just so much information all the time on the internet, in magazines, in newspapers, from your friends and family, from the people who love you most, telling you that there's a certain way you need to look, that there's a certain way to be healthy. And that is very scary and it can be very damaging to your mental health. If you look at actual research into dieting, about 95, 97% of all diets fail. And that is the weird thing about diets. They don't work. There's no point to them. They just make you feel really miserable about yourself. Uh, but it takes a lot of courage to listen to yourself and to realize you don't have to do that. You can ignore it. That is something that I now have done, but it really did take me a lot of years. And I think it's really wonderful to see a book about a teenage main character who has already realized that, who is ignoring diet culture. This is a great story, but it's also, as I say, it's a really great message. And it's something that I hope a lot of people read and learn from. I would say No Big Deal is for anyone about 12 plus, anyone who enjoys real world stories, stories about people just like themselves and their friends, who enjoys school stories, who enjoys stories set in the 21st century, who enjoys funny books. For my final recommendation this month, I'm gonna do something slightly different. I'm not gonna recommend you a classic book, I, in honour of A Pocket Full of Stars and Aisha Bushby, I'm going to recommend to you a computer game that I have really enjoyed in the last month. And that computer game is What Remains of Edith Finch. What Remains of Edith Finch is a computer game like nothing I've ever played before. It's very quick to play through. I finished my go through in about two and a half hours. It's very easy to play. Anyone at whatever level of gaming ability you are can play this game. And I also think that you'll enjoy it whatever level of gaming ability you have. You play as Edie, a girl who is coming back to her family's home after seven years away. She and her mother fled the home after something terrible happens that Edie doesn't tell you about. And to find out what it is and to find out what happened to all of Edie's family members, you have to get into Edie's house and go around all of the different rooms to uncover the stories of the end of each one of the Finch family. 
At first I thought it was going to be a ghost story and I was quite scared, I'm a bit of a wuss, but I can reassure you that there are no ghosts in this game. But what there is, is a lot of sadness, a lot of loss. This is definitely a game that's a little bit creepy, that's very sad, that if you're somebody who is quite sensitive you might want to have somebody else in the room with you or to play through with a friend or play it in the daytime, but it is the most beautifully imagined game. The graphics are gorgeous, the house is beautiful and intricate and you keep finding new rooms that you thought were locked, you keep getting to new places on the island that this house is on. And each one of the Finch family's deaths is recorded in a sort of short story that you become part of, and you have to do certain things in the game to unlock each one of these stories. So you are literally watching the deaths of all these family members, which is really sad, but they're written as such incredible short stories that you just fall into these worlds and you just get lost in the experience of each one of these stories. I partly chose this game because I think it's so fantastic, I had such a great time playing it, but I also chose it to remind you that there are lots of different ways to be a writer and that if you love writing, if you love telling stories, you don't just have to grow up to be an author of books like I have, you can grow up to become an author of video game plots, because that is a huge industry and there are some incredible writers working in the video game industry. All of the stories in What Remains of Edith Finch are beautifully told and thoughtful and sad and strange. Some of them are science fiction, some of them are horror, some of them are just plain sad. They're all really different and really interesting and I loved each one. Anyone who loves storytelling, who loves sad, strange ideas, who loves uncovering secrets and delving into the truth of things, anyone like that will really enjoy this game. It's for 12 plus and it is What Remains of Edith Finch, one of the most fantastic games I have played this year. So that's all for me for August and it's the end of a really busy, really exciting month for me. I'm going to have quite a different September. I'm going to shut down quite a few of my social media accounts just for a little while while I go away and work on something that I can't quite tell you about yet, but I think you're going to be really pleased with when I finally can. So September is a writing month. I will be posting my usual video at the end of that month, and I'll also be making a very exciting announcement towards the end of September on the 23rd. So watch my website, watch my social media. I'll be popping up just for one day on the 23rd to announce a very exciting murder most unladylike thing that is coming. But until then, I hope you've had as wonderful a summer as I have, and I will see you in September. Goodbye.